gold or stocks where you should be focused right now. Hey everyone, thank you for watching Yankee Stacking. You know I appreciate everything you do, watching my videos, hitting the thumbs up, subscribing, even leaving a comment, or I should say, especially leaving a comment, because I love reading them, I love learning from you guys. My uh, nephew came and talked to me and said, Uncle Yankee, have you seen what the stock market's been doing? Man, it's been going down and up, and oh, it's unbelievable, what a roller coaster ride. Should I get in on the stock market? Should, should I buy the dip? <laughs> that's, the, that's the question right now, isn't it? People are, are just dying to you know, bottom feed, get in on the market, buy some incredibly uh, undervalued stocks, and try to make some money. I don't blame them one bit. I used to do that a lot. And you know, sometimes you even short the market if you think it's going down. But my nephew wanted to know what to do. Should I get into the stock market? No. That was my advice. Absolutely not. But, 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 Uncle Yankee, did you see what happened last Monday? That was an amazing one-day increase in the Dow. I, I, I want to get in, right? I told him this. I said that, yes, that was an amazing increase. It was actually the fifth largest increase in the Dow in history. But I asked him, did you know what the first four were? And did you know when those first four largest increases in the Dow occurred? It was during the Great Depression. Hmm. Guys, rallies come and go, especially during a bear market, especially with some stimulus that we just received, both from the Fed and the government. It's a bear market rally, I told him. I said, you need to be very, very careful. Now, okay, uh, disclaimer, I'm not a financial planner nor a financial advisor. Do your own research. Don't just listen to Yankee. I'm going to tell you what I think. This is my opinion. But what I think we've been experiencing since the Great Recession is like the Roaring Twenties. In fact, we have been so used to uh, cheap money uh, quick V-shaped, re, like that, V-shaped recessions, <laughs> soaring equity prices for the better part of 40 years. I'm actually emailing with a gentleman in our community. He has no channel, no Facebook, uh, no Instagram, no Twitter. He says uh, he's trying to hide as best as he can. Although, you know, he realizes that's kind of impossible with a, a cell phone and a social security number. But <laughs> he's a great guy and he seems to really know his stuff. He sent me a link. The video is from Ciavaco Capital Management or CCM. And they have used historical data, uh, market data, to look at and identify several of the most extreme market drops in history. They, they analyze it. They look at it, they look at the initial bear market bounce, and then what happened after that, historically speaking. Now remember, history you know, doesn't necessarily repeat itself exactly, but it does tend to rhyme. So you wanna listen carefully. And the following data I'm gonna share with you, I, I just found remarkably eye-opening. They found that with prior extreme market drops, Every initial drop was followed by a counter trend rally, which I personally think may have you know wrapped up last Thursday. We'll see. But it 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 the every initial drop was followed by a counter trend rally. Okay. And every counter trend rally was followed up by a lower low built during a much longer time frame. Call it a, uh, a, a grinding bear market. And, and actually, that's what I think we're in right now. Um, they also found that the median lower low was 15.2% lower than the first low. Okay, so it, if it went down and then it shoots back up, 
it goes down a median of 15.2 from the prior low, okay? But the maximum low was 43% lower than the previous low, okay? So you get this bear market bounce and then, whoa, the median goes down 15.2%, the maximum 43% lower during these incredible uh, bear markets. The median time frame between the first low and the lower low was 110 days, but the earliest was 42 days. Okay, so a 15.2% lower low from the S&P 500's March uh, 23rd closing low of 2,237 would be 1897. Okay, Whew, that's a big drop. Personally, I think I think the median drop is a best case scenario. I wouldn't be surprised to see a 43 or more percent drop since last Monday's low. And that would bring the S&P 500 to 1275. Again, if history rhymes, and that would occur between say 2 to 4 months from now. I really think that's likely. I think the pin, where's my pin? <laughs> Where's my pin? I lost my pin. <laughs> oh, well, whatever. If the pin, I think the pin has done its work. Okay, I really do. I think the recession is a foregone conclusion. And I think the question is, do we go into a depression? Guys, we may have to wait decades to see the Dow go up to its high again, if ever, adjusted for inflation. That's important. I'll talk about that in a minute. And I think that's likely because of um, a couple key factors. Obviously, the debt that we have, but also demographics. So I said adjusted for inflation because you have to remember this. It's not about the nominal price of markets and assets. It's about the real price of markets and assets. It's inflation that we're talking about here, guys. Inflation is here, okay? It's here. <laughs> the actions of our Fed with obscene monetary stimulus and our government with wanton fiscal stimulus is inflation by definition, okay? It's increasing the money supply. And they're doing it in a whole different way. But that's for another video that I'm planning on doing, describing exactly what the Fed has done and how it's different this time. So... If you, back to inflation, if you jump into the S&P 500, say, and it doubles, let's say it goes to 5,000, that's a 100% increase. Yay, right? But if inflation quadruples, so what? You still lose 300%. So it's not about the nominal or the number okay, that might go up. Shoot, if, if they keep inflating uh, money, it's going to be seen in all kinds of asset prices, but inflation is going to run rampant. To, to drive home that point, listen to Alan Greenspan back in 1999 talking about Social Security, but check out what he said. Do you still believe that we should maintain the fundamental principles of Social Security as it, as it did in 83? I think we should maintain the principles of Social Security, but I think the existing structure is not working. And that uh, until we can construct a system which creates the savings that are required to build the real assets so that the retirees have real goods and services, uh, we don't have a system that's working. We have one that basically moves cash around. And we can guarantee cash benefits as far out and at whatever size you like, but we cannot guarantee their purchasing power. That was a remarkably truthful statement <laughs> coming from a Fed chairman. We don't hear that very often. I think we're in for a long-term crash, everyone. I think we're talking 70, 80, maybe even 90% drop in equity markets 
value-wise, okay? And I'm not talking about just penny stocks. I'm talking blue chips, the big ones, right? You know, the, the, the ones that you invest in thinking, oh, this is safe. And it's not unprecedented either, okay? So I'm not sure if you know this, but in 1929, right before the crash during the, and the start, I should say, of the Great Depression, the Dow was 381 points. After the crash, it took almost 25 years to get back to that level again, adjusted for inflation, 25 years. I think it was like 1953 before it regained what it had lost in value. So be very, very careful, all right? And, and let me compare that generation with our generation because the generational changes matter too. That generation back in the, um, in the roaring 20s, okay, and uh, also in the 30s, that, that whole time frame was known for savings. They were marked by manufacturing. They were unfamiliar with credit and high debt. Yeah, they spent quite a bit too, but they saved. We, we have an entirely different demographic. We're at all time debt highs right now. We have no manufacturing. We have no real savings. Baby boomers, they reached their peak spending years in 2007. Uh, I think it was an average age of 46, I think is, is what they calculate for that peak. Millennials are reaching their peak spending years at 47, roughly the same. But they're not spending. They're not buying homes. They're not buying cars. They're flat broke. So my opinion, and again, this is not advice, since I'm not a professional financial advisor, okay, but my opinion is to stay away from the equity markets completely. In my opinion, this is not the time to what they call catch a falling knife or even sit through this stimulus round one, round two, round three, round whatever is not going to work. It isn't. And, and by not working, I mean keep inflation and interest rates from spiking and, and, and restore um, you know, confidence in the midterm or long term. Because that's what we're suffering right now, guys, is a lack of confidence. The advice I gave to my nephew, again, I'm giving to myself and to you. Stay away from equities. Stick with hard assets like food, gold, shelter. And, and I said shelter for a reason. I didn't say real estate, okay? So you, you got to be careful on that. Um, not all property is created equal, okay? Especially during a recession or even a depression. You, you got to be really careful with real estate. A little side note, you don't want to be holding or, 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 or loan against uh, uh, expensive, high rent, uh, single family type uh, properties. You, you want inexpensive, lower rent multi-family properties. That's what you need to be focusing on, what I call shelters. People need food, <laughs> they need shelter, and they need a store of value. And that is what gold has been for thousands and thousands of years. Now you may be saying, Yankee, Fine, I can't find the stuff, okay? I know, I can't either. I'm trying to build my Yankee musket. Now, so, you know, I, I get it. It's hard to find it. But you got to keep looking. And I am. I'm talking to my dealers almost daily. I'm trying to get as many quarter ounce Canadian maple leaves as I can. So what do I do in the meantime? I keep my powder dry. Keep stacking this stuff. And this right here is an envelope inspired by another overtaxed taxpayer. I'll link to that video. He, he said, guys, keep your cash. 
<laughs> save it bit by bit. Now, I had some in here, but I'm sticking a bunch more in here right now. And this is what I am going to be buying. <laughs> Gold, all right? As soon as I can get my hands on it. That about wraps it up. Again, thank you so much for watching my channel, for watching this video. I hope it's been instructive, informative, maybe a little bit uh, entertaining. <laughs> but anyways, thank you so much, and I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.